Welcome to the Millennial Mic. I'm Ali. I'm Joe. And, and this is the Millennial Mic. Content for us, by us. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Millennial Mic. It's your cruise director speaking. On today's episode, Joe and I are joined by the one, the only, Wendell Holland. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> Wendell has spent his career moving the goalposts. He graduated from UPenn with a law degree, spent a couple of years clerking for judges, started building custom furniture on the side, left the legal field and started a custom furniture company, volunteer coaches basketball in Jamaica, was the winner of CBS's Survivor Ghost Island and is on the road right now living out his purpose. Welcome to the show, Wendell. Thank you very much. It's so great to be here. We're so excited to have you. So, Wendell, just to let you know that the Millennial Mic is all about showcasing different career fields and creative ways of pursuing your passion. Now, before we start, we'd love to get to know our guest a little bit better with a few warm-up questions about you. So, let's jump right in. The first question we have for you is, what is your favorite song? My favorite song? Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I, okay. I must say, I think... I think it changes over the years, but right now what I really love is a song called Dedication by Nipsey Hussle and Kendrick Lamar. That's a, that's going to have to be my favorite one. Okay, so um <laughs> so for for the listening public, Wendell is actually going to sing it sing a verse for us. Are you No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, all right. Just one verse. You one got this. verse, one verse. You got this. Oh man, uh, there's some singing involved. <laughs> All right, dedication, <laughs> dedication, hard work plus patience. The story of my sacrifice. I'm done waiting. I'm done waiting. Told you that I wasn't changing. Now you hear what I'm saying. Dedication. <laughs> I can't sing. <laughs> we love it. We love it. Uh, we think that you should enter Jamaica's vocalist challenge called what's it called? Rising, Rising Star. Rising Stars. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I don't think. I I don't think so. They would pay me so not to be. You, in it. So next time you come to Jamaica to coach um, basketball, we'll we'll set you up for an Sign audition. <laughs> All right, so, thank you very much. <laughs> so, Wendell, tell us, what is your mother's nickname for you? Okay, my mom's nickname for me is Beeve, B-E-V-E, Beeve. Okay. Yeah. And, and that was the inspiration for the name of your company, right? Because I know that your company is called yeah. Beeve Unlimited. Yes. So, I um, at first I had a more boring name for my company when I just, <laughs> was just getting started. My I called it Holland Custom because my last name is Holland and I, I build custom things. But a friend of mine in marketing, um, he kind of he knew my nickname and it wasn't a name that I shared with people. It was kind of like something I was actually embarrassed with, like a weird family nickname of mine, Beef. And then um, my friend said, "Hey, let's let's use that as the name of the company. And let's blast that out. And if you put the word Unlimited behind it, then it's kind of like." Um, it's kind of like it shows who you are because he basically said that I, I feel like I'm limitless and I can do a lot of things and I can accomplish a lot right. of things. So um, within the company, we build a lot of things and, and we take on so many different projects that we as the company feel kind of limitless as well. So it's Beave Unlimited. That's awesome. I love that story. Thank we you. have one last warm up question before we get to know more about your company and all that you do. So the last question we have for you, Wendell, which I mean, probably not, is probably like a really, really, really straightforward question. Super controversial. Read. Super controversial. Minds want to know: <laughs> Are you a coffee or tea person? Mm, okay, that's a good question. That's that. Now you're getting real personal. I see. Right, um, yeah. <laughs> let's see. Wendell, well, this will make or break our friendship. I know. I know. Okay. I, I'm gonna. Oh, here's okay. Cue the it's, dramatic music. Yes. <laughs> okay. I got to take deep breaths. So uh, my my father, he's a big inspiration in my life. And growing up, he always drank coffee. And he would say that he was like addicted to coffee or something like that. And growing up, I thought that being addicted to something was a bad thing. So mm -hmm. I tried to stay away from coffee. 
But as I got older, I understood how delicious coffee was. So okay, I would try it. Okay, getting back on the right path. <laughs> I would try it, <laughs> and I'd understand that its effects, it would make me, like, very sharp and, you know, give me a lot of energy. So um, st- in the same vein, it, still not wanting to become addicted to something, I don't drink it on a daily basis, but when I need to be sharp or when I record things or when I like um, when I'm on camera for something, then I'll like, I'll have a coffee so I could like push the energy out, you know, but question now to answer you to, I know what you're going to ask, but so to answer the original (laughs) question, (laughs) to answer the original question. So I think I'd lean towards tea, although I know oh I need to see it. Psychopath <laughs> on the show, part two. <laughs> so then you, were, then you were gonna ask, did I have coffee for this morning? Yes. For this show. Yes. So I, am, I feel like we're important. Right, you're very important. You're very important. <laughs> okay, let me start off by reminding you but he how important. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I did instead of coffee, I did my morning run, which also invigorates me. And okay. now I'm drinking an energy shake, so I have some good stuff in in this shake. Okay, I guess we'll take it. <laughs> Can we be friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess. Because I think both of, both of us definitely are um, one in that regard. Because you drink coffee when it's important, important things, and you need that kick. But generally, it sounds like you drink tea. So that's Joe Marie like bringing it back to diplomacy. Joe. Love to see it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Wendell, it's time to dive deep. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, let's go. Joe, take it away. Okay. So, Wendell, um, something that we actually have in common is a background in law. And what we really want to know, you know, is how did you make that transition from being in the legal sphere to being in the space that you are in now? And really, what made you leave? Okay. Um, that's a great question. Essentially, I was on that. I was on the legal traje- trajectory for a while. My dad's an attorney. Again, I, I follow a lot of the things that he says and does. He's a tremendous mentor in my life. And so after college, I applied to a bunch of law schools, got into UPenn. As a Philly boy, you, um, Penn is like a, a very good school in the area. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. you dream. Yeah, good school. Yes. Yes, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good school. So as a Philly boy, you want to go there. And I got in. So that was like a, that was like a goal of mine. Um, and also, I wasn't ready to. I guess finished learning at the time, and my dad said, "Why don't you try law school?" So, went to law school, thinking that I would then become like either an attorney or in politics somehow, maybe a senator or something mm-hmm. like that. So uh, that's what, because I've always felt like I've been pretty uh, diplomatic and things, and um, so anyway, while I was uh, after law school, I, w- I had some great clerkships and. Um, First was with a judge in civil court. Then I had one in family court. And I started building things on the side as like a passion project. And so as I started building and becoming proud of what I was building, I would post them on my social medias and people would ask me to build them things. So that's what kind of uh, started this side hustle of mine. And then it turned into a real business as more and more people asked me for things. And then finally, I think it was in 2015 or the beginning of 2015 or something, my last judge that I was clerking for retired. And at that point, I had all these projects that I was working on and building that I figured, right. why not try this as a real as a real thing? And then things just took off from there. So essentially, it was an organic build. Mm-hmm. And then I had the, oppor- the, the time allowed me the opportunity to just go full force. Yeah. And, and you went full force into furniture building and doing and doing that full time. Yes. So then I went full time building furniture, different things. Started out with beds. Uh, that was the first thing. So our <laughs> we have a hashtag. Let's talk about your bed. That's my my little hashtag on social media. And we have shirts that say "Let's talk Gross about your bed." You know, just, suggestive. Yeah. Just a little <laughs> something give it to all get away. you. Just a little something <laughs> to get you thinking, you know. Yeah. So, is a bed your favorite piece of furniture to build, or do you have a favorite piece of furniture to build? I think I think we could say I do enjoy beds because, um, uh, you know, people <laughs> come with the most. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can't even finish. I do this enjoy either. beds. We're keeping it. We're keeping it in the spirit. In the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> as you as you giggle while I, I enjoy. It was just Let the me, way he <laughs> said it. Like it was great. Anyway. Yes. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to correct my <laughs> sentence. I do enjoy building bed frames mm. because people have their different preferences and uh, different styles, and everyone wants something different on their bed. Like one lady ordered a bed from us that was she wanted a purple bed so um and she's like a, a an adult and it actually turned out <laughs> it actually turned out awesome but um you know people just have these weird quirky suggestions and whatnot so i do love building beds but what i what i love even more than that is a product that we've been pushing real hard as of late it's these uh basketball hoops that we've been building backboards awesome. and hoops so yeah. they um basketball is obviously as you know a passion of mine and building is a passion of mine so we started making these beautiful reclaimed wood backboards and basketball hoops okay great so with that in mind who do you say is your dream client maybe an nba star you know because of your because of the hoops that you you're building no or just anyone in general who would want a purple bed Mm. <laughs> my dream client i think what i would like is to make it a good um like a good situation going forward like if i provide something to this dream client then that could help the business or that could help me or they could give right. me like yeah. wisdom so there are two people in mind and the first person i would say is jay-z he um his the his brand is brilliant and i think that shoot i'd love to be represented by rock nation you know like his <laughs> the his um his whole company is just like they have a lot of talented people on that team so right. i would i would think of a jay-z i would also think of like an oprah winfrey uh for similar reasons because she is a huge brand she's a marketing machine Absolutely. and the last person would be lebron james because mm. He's stepping into that as well, and he has different companies under him, and he has become like another machine, and he's also the greatest basketball player living. So um, if I build hoops or something, he might help me uh, springboard those kinds of ideas. So those are the three dream clients. Yeah, and something that I actually noticed in what you're saying is the importance of like their brand and their marketing and how powerful they are in doing that. How important would you say is branding and marketing to like your business or just, you know, seeing that alignment for you? Yeah, I think branding and marketing is as important as it gets. Uh, you, you absolutely want to deliver a wonderful product that works and that people can, um, can love and enjoy. And it's durable, but um, in order for them to get that product or see that product, you need to be able to brand yourself or market yourself. And sometimes people, um, sometimes people want to buy into the idea of what it is that your your company is or what it is that your yeah, brand is. Story behind it. Yeah. yeah, they buy into the story first, and that that creates um, like loyalty, and that creates people wanting to. Um, maybe purchase your thing over something that might be that that might cost a little less or something like that. So um, it definitely has to do with marketing and branding. Yeah, awesome. I know that so much of your personal brand has also been influenced or impacted by your stint on survival and having one survival. Um, so I wanted you to share with us a little bit more about that journey how you ended up on Survivor. I understand that you are applying for like seven years um, yes. to get on to Survivor. So we want to know a little bit more about that and how it fits into all of your different career goals. Right. Okay, cool. So, man, how do I begin? I, I've, been, <laughs> I've been watching Survivor for years and thinking that although I've never been camping or starving or anything like that, I could be, I would be good on the show um, because I we think so too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just thought that um, from watching the show, I'm like, man, these people are they're doing like athletic type of challenges, and they have to deal with um, interpersonal relationships, and you have to be diplomatic and other things. And I, I just figured 
throughout my collection of experiences, being an athlete growing up, um, being going to law school, doing well in school and things like that, I just thought I had a good mix of um, just life experiences that would help me on a show like Survivor. Though I've never been starving on an island or camping before in my life. But I, I figured, you know, <laughs> maybe maybe the other things might help me out. So I applied for like literally like seven years. I said I did so many tapes. Yeah. I went to casting calls and auditions and all this stuff and I never got any I never got any traction. But mm. what's funny about like the way my life has the the story of my life is when I started um, building and doing something that I loved so much, which was like just creating, being a creator and providing this beautiful art through, you know, pieces of furniture to my clients. When I started living what I thought was my purpose, that's when Survivor finally called me. Um, that's when I finally got a call back and they invited me out to casting. So it seemed like the stars really aligned for me and the universe was kind of telling me, hey, um, you weren't meant to be on the show as a 20 something or as this naive person that, um, for, for whatever reason, I, I just wasn't on, wasn't able to get on the show. But when I was a little more mature and had a little more life experiences, wins and losses and failures and successes and all kinds of things, then I was able to get on this show that required all of those, uh, those skill sets and I was able to do very well and win the show. So it was cool how that all worked out for me. Yeah. So the, so the universe was really just guiding you towards taking that step when you were absolutely ready so much so that you won the show. Yes. What was that experience? Like, how did it feel? Um, what was it like leading up to it after? Yeah, it was, it was incredible. I, I filmed and then, um, my season they always film two seasons back to back in the spring and then they air one in the fall and one in the following spring so i filmed in the spring of 2017 and they aired a different season first in the fall of 2017 and then my season aired in the spring of 2018 so essentially i won on the show i knew i won but then it did. I, I had to hold this secret of me winning this amazing reward, this amazing show for almost eight, nine, ten months because I couldn't oh say anything gosh. until it aired. Yeah. Wow. So, so it was difficult because I even, I, I even, I remember even coming to the Jamaica camp and people knowing that I went on this show, but I would, I wouldn't say anything about it to anyone and. But my buddies just knew I disappeared for two months and I'm, I came back super skinny and looking all crazy, but they didn't know what that <laughs> meant. <laughs> so, uh, they didn't know if you had really survived exactly. the whole time or not. <laughs> so, they, uh, so they had to, you know, wait and watch in the springtime. And it was just awesome to keep this secret from my whole family and then to watch it unfold. It was a, it was a beautiful season. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and what's really remarkable about that story is how it's really a testament to patience and really just being aligned with the right timing because with all of your efforts and all of the time you spent, you know, you never gave up and you were very consistent in, in pursuing that particular goal. And one of the things we want to you know, know is what would you say, kind of parlaying into the basketball side of your background, what would you say voluntarism means to you and how does that fit into your life? Oh, to me, it's very important. Um, I've always been someone that would, uh, just a giver. And whether it be my time, that's your most valuable resource is your time or just Mm -hmm. anything I can. I donate whenever I see things on Facebook, people adamant about certain causes. Even if even if I can't give a lot, I always give. And I have this quote that I've always lived by. And it's, it's, a, it's a Wendell Holland quote. It's my quote. And <laughs> it, it is, whenever you can give, give whatever you can give. So whenever you can, then give what you can, essentially. So, and so, like, if I see someone um, raising money for a cause, even if I can only give $20, $25, I'll, I'll give that. 
just so they can ha- have a little bit more. Or if I see uh, a young kid shooting shooting hoops improperly, maybe I might go up to him and give him a little knowledge and say, hey, man, like, this is the proper shooting form. Or wh- So whenever you can give, give whatever you can give. And that's just a, a mantra that I've lived by. So when it comes to, like, volunteering my time for the camp, this is something that's so important to me. And um, because I love basketball and I love helping people. And with our camp, we say that we are, um, um, we're using sport to effectuate social change. So, yeah, we're teaching kids how to play basketball. And Jamaica, you guys have sports that you love way more than basketball. <laughs> but, but we come to this community and what we're really doing is putting smiles on kids' faces and teaching them how to be young um, vibrant, upstanding children and members of society. And although, you know, our vehicle is basketball, um, we're really teaching kids how to be, you know, just great, great people. And it's, yeah. it's just a beautiful thing seeing all the kids come together. That's yeah. awesome. So Joe, Wendell and I actually met at a fundraiser in New York right. for the basketball camp, um, which is something I love so much about him is how passionate he is about yeah. volunteerism and, and giving back to our community that he doesn't even belong to, right? Because yeah. I, I was actually going to ask, because um, it's very it's very interesting that with your passion and with your dedication of time that, you know, you are so committed to giving that time and to creating and molding and shaping um, the the kids. My what Something that I really want to know is what's a moment that happened at the camp that you would say made you really, really reinforced for you that this is so worth it? Oh, yeah. Um, there, first of all, there are so many of those moments. But I remember, what, like six years ago, my first year at the camp, um, I would see kids coming to the basketball court without shoes on their, without shoes on. They're playing basketball um, bare, bare, in bare feet. And that's something that's unheard of in the states. We uh, and we might we we take that for granted. These kids don't have basketball sneakers, so um, it was very touching. And what I have noticed about the camp, one uh, the camp rectifies that because we bring hundreds and hundreds of sneakers, and we provide all of our campers with new shoes. So it's a it's a great thing that um, that the camp does. But uh, what I make sure to do is at the end of the week. Um, I take my basketball sneakers, which are usually probably like some awesome sneakers. Like I've given away Kobe Bryant's, I've given away LeBron James sneakers. And I, I take my pair of sneakers and I give them to one of the campers that um, either they had like a, a great week or they had a great attitude or I see promise in them. And it looks like they re- might really take basketball seriously or for some, I find some reason to give away the sneakers off of my feet, which are, so yeah, they're they're a little used, but they're lightly used. But they're a, a very quality pair of sneakers to someone that is well deserving and that will really, really use them. So that's a, a touching moment, and I always post it on my Instagram, me and uh, whoever I give it to, just so like we can have that bond going forward, and I can always remember that person. Yeah, awesome. Joe and I are gonna have to come to the camp next time you guys have it um in post corona world <laughs> yes come on come i, th- I keep telling you <laughs> i know yeah. joe wendell has been trying to get me to camp for what like mm-hmm. two years or a yeah year? <laughs> something like that yeah. yeah don't worry she'll be there she'll be there even if we have to just bring her um drop her in the car she'll be there she'll be there. <laughs> bring her <laughs> job, bring her. <laughs> but i will be there i will definitely be there last time i was working through that week so unfortunately i couldn't go but Wendell, some of the thing, one of the things that that Joe and I always um, try to understand about the guests that come on to our show is really how do you connect all of your passions in creating a career, a life of your dreams, um, which I think, from what I know about you, you're living. So, if you could share with us just how you make all of that possible and and create this life, maybe of your dreams or beyond your dreams. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's um I am I'm so thankful that I'm able to live this life and do things that I love doing and it keeps the lights on obviously. So I, yeah. I think that if you're in tune and understand what, what you're passionate about 
And if you understand your why or, or your purpose or the things that you want to bring forward or give to the world, that really helps. And, um, and as far as my, as far as I'm concerned, as you know, I'm concerned with giving and helping others, but I'm also concerned with, um, just helping the environment and, um, my products, the things that I build are made out of reclaimed wood and resource materials. So I love it. Yes. So I love upcycling and I love, um, just giving a second life or a new life to things that mm. had this different life. It may be, uh, it may be a, an old barn that I build into a beautiful table and it may be, you know, a fence that I build into someone's, someone's bed. So I take things that might just end up in a landfill or burned or something like that. And I repurpose it. So I'm in tune with my why and, and what really drives me. And then that, allows me to build this this life that I desire around that. So um, I guess if you know what you have inside you or your passion, if you're a creative person, find that creative outlet. Um, but also whatever it is that you do, make sure you understand make sure make sure it's tied to the fabric or or who you are. You know, make sure if it's within your heart and it's something that you can do that also makes money for you um i think that that really helps yeah and I'm, I'm i'm happy you touched on that window because something that i find in common with a lot of young people is that there is this there's this notion that you can only be one thing and that one thing has to fit into you know a traditional mold or it has to be something that you know everybody else is doing in terms of what is what is what we're all accustomed to so a follow-up question would be if you had to give a practical step for that multi-potentialite, I think that's the term for it, that person who has so many things that they could be doing, what would you recommend as a practical step for them to figure out what that anchoring um, passion is? Wow. Um, whew, if, if someone is good at a lot of things, that, yeah, that the story of my life is someone that didn't necessarily specialize until a later time and just, I did. I always did a lot of things, and I think that kind of helps you hone in on what what it is that you love doing, or what it is that will be the one thing that um, that that drives you, or pushes you, or helps you make money. And I guess when you find that thing, it's important to set goals and set a plan and understand where you want to go with that. So um, if you're just throwing a bunch, if, if you're just working but you don't have a goal or or an end game then it's like you're just going to infinitely be working and but if you have a, an end goal or if you have something that you're trying to achieve then you could set interme intermediate goals and then you can have other things that you accomplish that are all in line with that end goal that will all point you in that direction so i think it's a matter of trying to understand what you want to get out of what it is that you want to do so if I if I'm creating this furniture line, and I say say I want to um, if I want to sell my line at the end of ten years for X amount of dollars, then I think all right, how do I structure this 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 company so that I'll be able to sell it? Then how do I um, what is the marketing tools that I need to do? What are the accomplishments and the benchmarks that I need to hit so I can ultimately in ten years sell this company? So uh, it's just a matter, I think it's a matter of goal setting. Yeah. Um, and I think something in relation to goal setting and what creates a framework for that arguably is mentorship. And so what I would love to, or what we would love to understand is have you benefited from mentorship in your career, you know, or in your life and how has it played a role for you? Okay. Mentorship is, is huge. If you ask me. I know that there are a lot of um, younger people around my area that look up to me as a mentor, and I know that I value some very important mentors in my life. Um, essentially, you whatever someone someone has done it before you, whatever it is, someone has done it first. So it's always important to learn from other people, uh, whether it's their failures or successes, and look to people and. But it's also important to have the right the right mentors. So in my case, 
my first mentor that I've always had was my father. Um, just someone that was uh, just just someone that I aspire to be like. And he 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 was just a, a very hardworking person. He didn't come from much, but he he worked his butt off to get where he is. And he he was just always like whenever I would see him, he didn't. He never used profanity around me or my sisters. He never even drank alcohol around us. Or he, if he, if he got like fired from a job or something, we would never know it because we never felt it or or saw it. it. The way he lived was just like, or the way he lives is just like what I aspire to be. So that's that's my father. So that's someone who I always look to for advice or mentorship. But then I also found someone that. Uh, he was like um, one of my friends from high school. It was, it's her father. His name is Les, and he picked up woodworking. And he's this like this older Jewish dude that has a lot. This old wealthy Jewish dude that just loves woodworking, and he's been retired for a while. And he picked up this hobby maybe like fifteen years ago. And so he's so great at woodworking, but also he's just like he's like a father figure or a cool uncle to me because. I met him way back in high school and he would always have me and my friends come by and like um, just do little projects for him. If he needed his gutters cleaned or if he needed us to help move something, he just called me and my buddies. And that's how um, he became a mentor of mine. But he's also been this very successful businessman. So when I tell him about how I'm trying to um, do things within my business or restructure things or talk about employees or anything like that, he always has these like, pearls of wisdom and gems that he shares with me so um and this is somebody he can't gain anything from me he has everything he wants but he's just right. someone that I can look to and just like keep it really real with and I can say what whatever's in my heart and I know that because he he doesn't have anything to gain from me he keeps things real with me and he just like I, I learned so much from him because he he doesn't. It's not like he wants anything other than than to just be a friend or a mentor to me. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's um important. yeah, mentorship is huge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I guess a form of mentorship also comes um through you know books and um documentary films and stuff like that is there a favorite resource that you have whether right now or just in general it could be a book a website a documentary anything okay. that you think like really benefits people that's benefiting you yeah um right now i let's say i love i love the resource audible because yes <laughs> my good books yes, I some okay. of the coffee. yes. Audible so, is my favorite resource <laughs> I have this I have this huge library of books that I've only read you know not even half of them because I think I don't I don't allow myself the time to sit down and have those hours of reading but what I do have is I have a lot of hours in the shop or I have hours that I'm running or I have hours that I'm driving so it's, I can't read while I'm doing any of that but I can listen to a good book so Audible has helped me with that. And um, as of late, I've been listening to books that help me understand my purpose or the purpose of my business or how to, um, how to, you know, structure my business or have certain goals, like I said, goal setting um, that will help the business do better or help me find like the true purpose and whatnot of, of my business. So right now I'm reading the book called Start With Why. And um, it basically, it is helping me understand the why to my business. And, and I, obviously, I love upcycling and, and I love repurposing and giving things a new life. Uh, but I'm just really trying to hone in into that why, that, that the real meaning and purpose behind this, all this building that I do. That's awesome. I know you were telling me about a book called, was it One Thing? Oh, the one thing! Wow, yeah, that was the last book that I that I was reading, and that's that was another one that helped me out. It, it essentially the one thing is telling you to specialize and 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 boil things down to like like the one goal and how to get there. And if there is one single thing, if there's one single thing that you want to accomplish in say ten years, then um, you need to set certain goals along that way. 
And it all boils, boils down to the one simple thing that, um, that you do right here and now or today to accomplish the one simple thing for this week, to accomplish the one simple thing for this month, to this year, to the five-year plan, to the 10-year plan. So yeah, that's, that's, the other, that's the other book that I just finished. That's awesome. We will be sure to share both of those resources with our audience. Those recommendations. So, Wendell, um, we want to know, how can our audience reach you? Whether it be Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or your website. How I heard him we say something about Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Ooh, I yeah. it wasn't even mentioned, but okay. <laughs> okay, so I can be reached, my company can be reached, Beave Unlimited, B-E-V-E, unlimited on instagram um just b-e-v-e unlimited or i can be reached personally on instagram it's wendell holland at w-e-n-d-e-l-l-h-o-l-l-a-n-d or you can find me at wendellholland.com where you can see some things about survivors some things about the business just Mm. that's more so like just a lot of things about me that's awesome Okay. Well, no, thank you so much. This has been an absolutely amazing interview. Um, and for our audience who is interested, as you know, after every episode, we do a mentorship giveaway. So you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter to enter or email us at bookings at the for your chance to win a mentorship session with Wendell Holland. We are asking you to like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you want to hear from, who you want to hear from, what you want to learn about, and whether or not you're feeling the Millennial Mike content. So thank you all so much for tuning in. And Wendell, we're going to ask you to do this part with us where we say, I'm Ali. I'm Joe. And I'm Wendell. And this This has been been the the Millennial Millennial Mike. Mike. Wendell, thank you so much. Thanks, Wendell. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Millennial Mike. Don't forget to visit our website at www.themillennialmike.com. See you next time.